Hello, my name is Mike Ranieri. I'm here with another Redfish School video. In today's session, we'll be talking about SmartNICs with Redfish. In today's session, we'll be going over what SmartNICs are. We'll show how the chassis and network adapter model in, in Redfish maps to SmartNICs. We'll also discuss several modeling patterns that apply to different classes of SmartNICs. And then we'll end with how the fabric model in Redfish applies to SmartNICs. SmartNICs are becoming common in the data center, and the, the best way to describe them is, is it's some type of comp, uh, networking functionality combined with computational capacity. This type of computational capacity could be things like you have programmable offload capabilities, maybe there's embedded artificial intelligence and machine learning, maybe there's deep packet inspection for early malware detection or other firewalling capabilities. However you describe it, when you think about where the SmartNIC sits in the, the overall hierarchy of a data center, the best way to, to describe that is that's really um, an extension of an existing computer system. So while it may look a lot like its own standalone system, uh, it's really meant to extend uh, an existing server you might have in a rack with, with, a, with some, uh, some of its own computational capacity. At this time, you can uh, think of SmartNICs as broken down to three classifications. You have ASIC-based solutions where the uh, uh, computational offload is embedded in the, in the networking functionality itself. Uh, you have FPGA-based implementations where there's, there are separate FPGAs or sometimes other types of processing elements that run, al run alongside the, uh, the, uh, the, the networking function. And so that gives the user more flexibility for controlling what type of offload is performed. And then finally, you have SOC-based offerings where you have full-fledged computer systems doing the offload capability. Maybe there is local processing or storage embedded on that device that, that allows a, a user to have a lot of flexibility in terms of what types of offloading they can perform. In Redfish, uh, we model the physical view of what's in your data center using the chassis resource. And the best way to think about chassis is not, not just a, a, a piece of sheet metal that you put in a rack, but it's really more of a physical container and you can have nesting of, of containers within the, the chassis model. SmartNICs are very complex devices with their own sets of components, sensors, power and thermal information. And depending on the, the scope of the, uh, the SmartNIC, it, it can grow quite large. And so, the, the best way to model a smart NIC is to use the, the chassis resource as the, the, to show the physical boundary of the smart NIC itself. Uh, within chassis, uh, there's the chassis type property, which uh, should contain the value card. Um, but depending on what it, the, the architecture of the smart NIC is, uh, uh, other values like zone or module might apply. Uh, using the network adapters property within chassis, you can reference the set of uh, embedded network adapters that ultimately get consumed by the, uh, the host system uh, within the smart NIC. Uh, you would also use the contain by property within links to show the, the hierarchy of the chassis nesting. So this contain by property would point up to the, uh, the enclosure or, or some other type of bay that, that contains the smart NIC. And then other properties such as thermal subsystem drives, computer systems and links might apply uh, uh, for a given implementation of the SmartNIC. So a, a lot of the other properties in chassis, they, they could be used with a SmartNIC. It, it's all de dependent on the capabilities of that device. Showing what this looks like from a, a resource diagram. Uh, on our left, we have our chassis collection. In this case, we have two members. Uh, uh, we have a chassis called 1U and a chassis called Card1 and they have a bi-directional relationship to show their contains and contain by. Um, so chassis 1U contains card one and likewise card one is contained by chassis 1U. Uh, also within card one, we have our network adapters collection. In this case, we just have a single network adapter and we have our ports and network device functions collection and, and each of those collections just contains one member. There's also, a uh, the, an optional allow deny collection within each network device function, or you can program firewalling capabilities. So if you need, so if you have the ability to set up IP address filtering, port filtering, that's where that can go at the function level. 
ASIC based smart NICs are the, the class of smart NIC where you have offloading directly embedded in networking functions. So there's very little flexibility in terms of how a, a user might control the, the types of offloading done. This type of smart NIC is primarily dependent on the network adapter uh, resource and its subordinate resources. And the things to look for in this model would be uh, the network device function resources, the port resources. You might also have the allow deny resources to uh, support your firewalling capabilities. And you might also have metrics resources to report uh, various statistics about how the, uh, the, uh, the smart NIC is behaving. Uh, this is very much in line with what exists for uh, traditional NICs today. So what you don't see in this type of model are the, the controllable aspects of how you can configure the offloading capabilities. Showing an ASIC based smart NIC from a, uh, a resource model perspective, uh, we're again, we're building on the, the previous slide showing the network adapter model. On the right side, we, we continue to show chassis one U and card one with the, the network adapter one and network device function one. The port collection was removed for simplicity's sake. What we're showing here with how it maps back to a, a host system, we have our systems collection on the left with a system called CS1, and we see that it is contained within a chassis 1U. We also see its subordinate resources such as processors, network interfaces. Again, for the sake of simplicity, uh, a lot of other resources like memory, storage, BIOS, uh, those have been omitted just, just so it's easier to look at this diagram. But if you follow the, the network interface model down into the, um, uh, the network device function collection, uh, you see that it maps over to the network device function under card one. And this is consistent with the advanced communication device model that we have today. FPGA-based smart NICs uh, provide offloading functionality with programmable devices, and, and those programmable devices are, are associate, directly associated with a, a given networking function. Um, like with the ASIC-based smart NIC, the starting, the starting point for modeling these types of extensions are based in the network adapter resource. Uh, you will find network device function and port resources like before, but you will also find processor resources. And so these processor resources are used to represent the offloading devices uh, for each of the network device functions. You might also have a, uh, your allow deny resources to support your firewalling capabilities. And, and you might also have met, uh, metrics related resources for showing all your statistics about, uh, uh, about the device. So within each processor resource, you will, it, it will show a relationship to a given network device function. So in the event that you have a smart with multiple programmable devices, um, and you have multiple functions. Maybe there's a one-to-one -one relationship between a function and a programmable processor. Maybe it's a one-to-many, or maybe it's configurable, but, but this shows how each network device function is being offloaded by a given processing component. Uh, again, building on the, the previous uh, uh, resource model, we, we ex what we show here is we've extended the network adapter model on the right to have a processor collection beneath network adapter one. In this case, we have a smart NIC with two discrete processors, FPGA one and FPGA two, and it has three network device functions, one, two, and three. Uh, in this case, we're showing that FPGA one is performing offloading capabilities for functions one and two, and FPGA two is providing offloading capabilities for function three. And like with the ASIC model, you have the host system on the left called CS1, and we have a network interface called interface one with a single network device function being referenced by the smart NIC. So we can see that uh, that one function is being consumed by that host system. SOC based smart NICs provide offloading through an embedded system. So this is taking a, a step beyond what you might see with just a discrete processor FPGA alongside of a, uh, a networking function. Uh, like with the previous examples, uh, the modeling is based upon the, the network adapter resource. And so you'll find uh, network device function and port resources. You will also, you, you might also uh, find allow deny resources to support your fire, firewalling capabilities and possibly metrics related resources to show all your, your statistics for the device. You will also find a computer system resource that represents the embedded system performing all the, the offloading capability. 
Uh, this will show up in the system collection at off of service root. Uh, the key differentiator is that the system type property, system type property will contain the value DPU uh, for data processing units. And so that's the, uh, the distinction between a, a typical physical server you might find in a rack and the, the embedded SOC within a smart NIC. You will also see relationships between the, the DPU computer system and the network device function resources that um, uh, to, to show who is offloading which functions. Since this is a computer system, you might also experience other types of resources and properties you'll find on a traditional physical system. You, you could have boot override capabilities on that device. You might have a processor memory storage collections to show the physical components and, and other types of capacities of the, the uh, embedded system. You could have BIOS there to control your, uh, your BIOS settings. So looking at a relation, uh, resource map for, uh, for this class of SmartNIC, Again, we have our computer system one on the left side, but now we also have a new system in that collection called SOC one and highlighting the fact that the system type property will contain the value DPU. And we see from the, from the relationship uh, map that SOC one is providing offload capabilities for network device function one on the right side. What's not shown are all the potential subordinate resources and properties that could be found in SOC one. So you could have its own processor collection, its own memory collection, its own storage collection. There could be drives in that. It's, uh, it, it is a full embedded system and it could be uh, modeled as such as needed. The, the fabric model plays a role in configuring smart NICs in terms of uh, uh, many, many classes of smart NICs have various properties that you might find uh, within networking switches. And these are all virtualized and embedded in the SmartNIC itself. Uh, some examples could be you have uh, virtual functions uh, within the SmartNIC that need to be mapped to a, a single port. Maybe you have your EBGP settings to represent underlay and overlay networks. One thing to note though, is while these are switching properties, it's not necessary to model the switch itself. Uh, so within the, the fabric model for Redfish, uh, SmartNICs uh, can be configured using uh, the endpoint, address pool, and zone resources. Uh, endpoint is used to represent the fabric view of a specific networking function. Uh, so that, that will reference a network device function back within uh, the, uh, the, the network adapter model. Zone can represent uh, subnets of devices and, and uh, the associated endpoints within the SmartNIC that are routable. And then address pool is used to show and configure uh, networking related settings, such as your, your DNS settings, DHCP, gateway, NTP. Um, and, and so that way you can get all your switching related properties uh, configured for a smart NIC that way. From a relationship model, uh, taking our card one example again, uh, in this case, we have uh, one network adapter. We have two network device functions with two ports. Um, on the right side, we have our fabric model. Uh, and we have our endpoint collection, zone collection, address pools collection. In this case, uh, we have two endpoints. Each endpoint maps to their respective zones. So EP1 maps to network device function one, EP2 maps to network device function two. And then we also see that there's a single zone de defined where both endpoints are mapped into that same zone. We also have a single address pool to show that uh, there's a common set of networking settings that are applied to both endpoints. This comes to the end of the, the Redfish School for SmartNix video. Thank you for watching. Uh, for more information, you can visit the, the DMTF website at dmtf.org, or you can visit the Redfish Developer Hub at redfish.dmtf.org.